This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Winter's nap, coming back and, uh, and doing this thing all over again. The sheer sense of madness of it all, of doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. We'll have the Citizens Panel a little bit later. We're on until m- midnight tonight, Eastern Time in the United States of America, and we invite you to call our Citizens Panel, but we'll do that in a little bit. Mean Wilst, I've got a guest here for you tonight, and it's, he's here on video, too. Ladies and gentlemen, a New Year look for a New Year guy. <laughs> it's the lovely and attractive Will Durst. How you doing, Will? Good morning, and Happy New Year, Alex. Yeah, well, actually, it's evening when this is being played, so let's take two. Good okay. evening. But then we show out your window. Of course, it's daytime, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Good evening, and Happy (laughs) New Year, Alex Bennett. Uh, How was your New Year? Uh, You were working. We were working. We we started on December 26th. We done a different night in a different club in a different theater every night. And New Year's Eve, we were at a theater in San Jose, Mm -hmm. and just too many stairs for me. Uh, it's 15 stairs from the green room to the lobby and then 30 stairs in the lobby to the theater. And they're killing me with two shows. Hey, old man. I know. <laughs> and you, what you do? Well, I do. I, I had um, a new year with uh, my friend Shecky was here uh, and uh, also my uh, friends uh, Jack and Natalia uh, uh, were here. And we had a very, very, it was very nice. I made uh, ribs. My my new patented ribs that I make that are very good. You get a new recipe. Well, I've I've developed it over the years, okay, and and okay. I've gotten it to the point where it's just right, okay. I found the best place to buy the ribs. I found the best way to do the ribs. You know, I tried all the different versions, and finally I came up with this one, and it's good. It's good. And, and how many hours? Uh, about three and a half, four hours. And what? Uh, how hot of an oven? About two twenty-five. Oh wow! Yeah, you start at three twenty-five for about twenty minutes, and then you go to to uh, two twenty-five, and you let it go, and you go for a, 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 the first. You take the ribs and you put them in aluminum foil, cover them, right, 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 and then you let them go for about an hour and twenty minutes, and then you unwrap those, and then you put them in there for another hour, and then you uh, put the sauce on and let that go for another half hour. And then what I do is a nice finish, okay, is I take the ribs and I baste them again, and then I put them under the broiler to get a nice uh-huh. char across the top right, of them. Right, right. Yeah. So that's my, that's my, th- I just gave away my patented rib. Uh, you gave away your patented rib recipe. My patented rib recipe. Very yeah, simple. The, you know. Yeah. Very, very simple. Boozing it this early in the morning, huh? Yep. Going for the white. <laughs> <laughs> is it's water, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I uh, met a guy at a winery, and he gave out these bottles, and they're just water bottles, and they come with a little cork. Yeah. And they're refillable, and I've been using it ever since. And it's Tambor Bay a yeah. winery in uh, Napa. Very, very nice. I'm just doing my uh-huh. my coffee here. My death death. Uh, what is it? Death Wish Coffee? Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of caffeine? Very. <laughs> Very. Anyway, uh, so uh, you you did your uh, your little show, and it did well. You, did you get a nice crowd? Uh, we sold out two shows. They yeah. only sat about 140. Yeah. But uh, And then we did our balloon drop. But we do an interactive balloon drop, because we're too cheap to actually put them up there so we have the audience blow up their own balloons that's not a bad idea actually 
No, actually, they get involved in it. They yeah. really enjoy it. Yeah, we some... we used to do this thing every year at the uh, the what do you call it? Pals of Fine Arts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a little bigger house to try and fill, although not huge, you know, but big. Twelve hundred, isn't it? Huh? A twelve? Is it twelve hundred? I can't remember. Excellent. But uh, and we used to do two shows. We do an early show and then we do the late show. And the late show, of course, we charged more for than the early show because that was the one that hit midnight. And uh, we would, uh, uh, you did some, you did a couple of them, didn't you? No. You didn't do any of them? No. I never hired you to do a New Year's show? What no. was wrong with me? But I loved your posters. You had the best New Year's posters. Really? I don't remember them. <laughs> remember they were all photoshopped with the heads of the comics one was they were gangsters from the 30s. Oh yeah, yes, I do remember. Actually, Sabrina I didn't. Math. Yeah, I yeah, didn't Sabrina do that. Math. One, uh, they were astronauts. At a certain point, I got into business with Bill Graham Presents, and they produced the shows for me. We got tired of you know putting the shows together and producing them and hiring the comics and all of that. We we just turned the whole thing over. I have my eyes been dripping for days now. No. It's cold here. It's just miserable. Anyway, um, uh, so um, uh, we uh, we you know uh, so we started having Bill Graham doing them. Uh, so that uh, you know that's when I think those posters came out. They right, were right. they were very good at them. So. Uh, but it was yeah, great. You all saw how cold it was on New Year's Eve. Everybody who was doing the, the live stuff from uh, Times Square was bundled up and complaining about how cold it was. Well, people would say to me, what are you doing New Year's Eve? And I'd say, I'm working. You know. And when we did them at the Palace of Fine Arts, it was one block away from where I lived. <laughs> so I'd walk down right. the street, work for four hours, and walk home with ten grand. Wow. <laughs> you know, that was wow. those those were the good old days, folks. You know, that's when I used to be a big shot. Yeah, but at least you took advantage of it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh Donald J. Trump. He's been the elephant in the room for a year. It's hard to believe. It seems like decades. I mean, shouldn't he be termed out by now? Well, you know what the problem with him is that bothers me? My wife cannot watch the news anymore, and I'm finding it rather difficult as well, because what he does is he dominates it. Every single fucking day he does something. He's like a crying baby who has to have attention paid to him. Yeah, he did that during the uh, campaign, too. Yeah. Every day, Hillary couldn't get any traction. Every day, no matter people were screaming at him, he had done some faux pas or or made a stupid statement, and people just talked about him every single day. Yeah, yeah, it was, it, and, and it, it's like a crying baby, and the more we pick him up, the more he cries. <laughs> you, you know? Uh, uh, Stop if, picking him up. Yeah, well, I've said that if you really want to really hurt Donald Trump, everybody, if, you re if the press really is sick and tired of being assailed by him, then don't pay attention to him. Just ignore him, and he will, believe it or not, go away. <laughs> he will shrivel if he doesn't get the publicity. Yeah, it doesn't work when he's the president of the United States, though. So. Well, no, we, the, they feel compelled to do it, okay? They feel compelled to do it, but they don't have to. Not every day. You know, not every tweet. Not every shitty fucking thing he says. <laughs> Well, how are you going to ignore the stupid stuff? It's all stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, all I'm saying is the man, it's like this monster, you know, the, you see those things where they, the monster that thrives on electricity, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, so, so turn off the fucking electricity. <laughs> Either that or just uh, jolt them with uh, 800,000 volts. <laughs> yes. Something like that. The thing from another world. Uh, but I, I love mean, that movie. Yeah, I, I, when I was a kid. It's a walking tree. What? He it, starts out as a walking tree when he first lands on Earth. Yeah. Uh, he's a vegetable. No, he's a vegetable. Yeah. He's a vegetable. Uh, but he. Uh, but that movie, when I was a kid, 
I went to see it in the theater, and it was so scary, I had to leave the theater. And I would walk, went into the lobby, and in those days, the movie theater doors had like little windows in them. You remember that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I would peek through the window to see what was happening because it was so fucking scary. Yeah. Was, I also loved the dialogue because that was Howard Hawks, I believe. Well, they that was the first dialogue uh, in a movie where they tried to be as natural as they could in speaking. They would talk over each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and so on. And so because of the naturalness of their of their speaking, uh, it made it even scarier. Because it made it seem even more real. I mean, the actors weren't going, oh, there's a monster out there. You know, they go, it's a monster. <laughs> yeah. And James Arness played the thing. Yes, sir. He sure did. Yeah. For brief. I was thinking, the one I was thinking was, it It came from another world. That was the one where he was a, where he, when he first lands, he's a tree. Oh, really? Yeah, it came from another world. Yeah. Oh, Not I never saw that. From one. Another world. Yeah. I, I, I saw it came from outer space. Did you see uh, uh, what's his what? name's John Carpenter's remake of the thing? Yes. Are you a fan? Well, I'm mixed about it, and I'll tell you why I'm mixed about it. Uh, the the um, I like the film because it is true to the truer to the original book, right? Uh, in which the the change he can change and morph into different people and things and so on and so it makes it scarier because the person you could be talking to is the thing, right? In the movie, it was just the you know, monster time. It was like a it looked like Frankenstein's monster in a strange way, you know. Um, so I kind of like what Carpenter did with it, but I I I I, I don't know if he, it was great, okay, but. It was certainly uh, a new way of doing it and trying to do it more true to the uh, to the nature of the book. So. What have you seen that's been out recently that you like? Well, let me see here. You know what I saw? Boy, we have no politics to talk about. It's the same fucking thing. Um, we'll get to that in a second. I want to get to the, the tax <clears> thing <throat> in a second. But um, the big sick. Which oh, I didn't yeah. think I would like. I, I've gotten a lot, I get a lot of screeners now this time of the year because I'm a member of SAG AFTRA, uh, uh, and we have the SAG AFTRA awards, and so there are acting awards, and uh, we get all these films for the acting, and we saw The Big Sick, which we liked. We it's a wonderful little film. I mean, I was amazed. I thought we'd watch it and go, eh, you know, okay, so yeah, yeah. you know, uh, comedian makes a movie, big deal, you know. And yet it is really very, it's, it's good. It's, I suggest everybody go see it. You won't be disappointed in it. It's one of those small little films that's great. Uh, uh, we saw what, three billboards outside Ebbing, ah, wherever. I want to see that. Yeah. Uh, good, good film. <clears throat> good film. I, Tanya? I, Tanya, what, saw that. Uh, the only thing good about it is what's her name? The woman who's on the West Wing, um, uh, Allison Janney. Allison Janney. She's really good in that film. She's really terrific. But the film is kind of like a made-for-TV movie, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know. So, um, and then uh, let's see here. What else do we see? Uh, well, of course, in the theaters, and then we also got it for SAG. Uh, was uh, um, Shape of Water, which I think is uh -huh. the I think that's the best picture of the year. I have no no doubt about it so far. Uh, we saw The Darkest Hour yesterday, watched it. It's the thing on Churchill right? Uh, with Gary Oldman. Uh, I don't know. Wasn't, I, I, I was dozing off. You know, it was, it was, I didn't think it was that good. And I'm getting tired of actors who go for Academy Awards by doing an impression. Well, that's what <clears throat> seems to win. Yeah, it always seems to win. Uh, there was a period there of like five years where every year the best actor and best actress were all portraying other people like Ray Charles and Idi Amin and uh, whatever. And I'm going, come on, you know, I, I, I want to see somebody act here. And uh, so it's, it's another one of those impression movies. You know, yeah, Oldman's great. But I noticed, though, the makeup changes... <laughs> 
in the film. Oh, no kid. It's not. There's a slight inconsistency in the makeup. So sometimes he, he looks more like Gary Oldman than other times. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, what other movie did we see? We watched something else. Uh, oh, yeah, we watched uh, the... Uh, that film with James Franco, uh, the something artist, the uh, disaster artist. Uh, and it's a good little picture, but strange. Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's very good. But again, it's another one of those movies that romances uh, Hollywood failure. And I, 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 you know, it was okay. It was interesting. I, I wasn't aware of the movie that they were talking about, and I wasn't aware of the situation. Uh, it's kind of like an Ed Wood deal. And I, I, so I found it interesting on that level. Uh, and Franco's terrific, you know. I like him as an artist. I like him. I think he's a, he's a sincere person about doing his art. So anyway. And and his art has many different, you know, directions. Yes, definitely. So you know, I uh, um, those are some of the movies I've seen. I've still we still got a few more to see uh, that we haven't seen. But for me, the movie to beat is Shape of Water. Which is basically a monster picture is a love story. It's a yeah. creature from the Black yeah. Lagoon gets a heart on. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, the creature from the Black Lagoon, if you may remember, did get a heart on. I mean, he 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 was hot for that chick in the movie, and that's why he keeps trying to steal her and and so on. But Guillermo del Toro, who said that this it influenced him in making this film, decided, well, let's take it all the way. You know. <laughs> And and uh, she actually like has sex with him and everything. You know, it's wonderful. It's a great film. Sally Hawkins, amazing. You know. Yeah, so she's gonna give Margot Robbie a, a run for her money, right? Oh, Margot Robbie, I don't think has a chance. Oh, really? No, I don't. I really don't think so. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's it, you know those are some of the good, some of the good movies. Anything good you've seen? We uh, <clears throat> we stayed at a hotel on New Year's Eve and paid the the twenty dollars to watch Murder on the Orient Express. Oh. We had seen it when it came out. God help you! No, it was beautiful. It's beautiful, but is it good? Uh, it was it was okay. I can't believe they actually made it when it's such a famous reveal. I mean, it's one of the most famous you know, uh, answers to a mystery ever written. Yeah. And I thought everybody knew it. You know, that's why I couldn't believe that they, they were making it. Yeah. And I was confused by how, how much, how he arrived at his uh, assumptions and deductions. Uh, but it was beautiful. Kenneth Bernard did a great, great job yeah. directing it. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's get uh, let's get back to the elephant in the no, room. No, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. It was it was the holidays. Nothing happened yeah. in the last week or so. Well, no, but we, you know, I mean, we could we could look at the year, and and it sucked the year. What can you say about it? It sucked. <laughs> he, he's destroying America. He's he's changing who we are. He's making us coarser in all of our. All, all of our responses to everything now. Yeah. He's made us kind of ugly, hasn't he? Yes. Yes. Quite ugly. Um, um, what, do you, what do you think about it? how your tax is going to do? They're going to go up? They're going to go down? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a, 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 a good relationship with my accountant. So. Oh, I see. <laughs> because my accountant, Gary, you know Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's yeah. he doing? He's doing fine. He's yeah. What you say is going to happen to you? Huh? Well, he says that because I am not working and I'm living basically on Social Security and my and my pensions and so on. Uh, oh God, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? That I've reached the point where I'm unemployable and I have uh, 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 I live on a, on a small after a pension and my Social Security and of course some savings that I have. Okay, and my wife my wife is still working. She's still working. I mean, and your skill set has has not deteriorated. Well, I feel it has gone to shit, but that's my opinion, you know. Anyway, so um, uh, it's like your ribs. It's it like, took a long time to get them good. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know that I I don't know that I've got it anymore. But we'll talk about that some other time. 
uh, but that's just my feeling. If I went to work every day at some place, I think I would still be on top of it. Okay, but it's hard to be on top of it when you're sitting in your apartment in your pajamas. You know, it, 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 I just don't have that. Well, anyway, point I'm making. We were talking about taxes. He says, and my wife's working. But he says, with all of that concern, he says, you guys are going to make money this year. You know, you'll get money, you, you know, next, it, year. next year, you know, that it, it, your taxes are not going to, uh, you're not going to have to pay anything, okay? Uh, that it, it, we, you will get a little bit more money back. He said, but that doesn't mean that everybody is. And he said, on the whole, he felt it was bad for everybody. And I said, then I don't want to get money back. You know, I want everybody to be able to be in good shape and not have to worry. Uh, and and um, my my attitude is they're, what they're going to do is they're going to say, OK, uh, you've got these taxes and everybody's going to go, oh, good. I got another hundred dollars a month in my pocket. Fuck you. A hundred bucks in your pocket. You know, you piss a hundred bucks. Right. Uh, in New York, but, it costs a hundred bucks to walk out the door. It, 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 yeah. Yeah, it costs a hundred bucks for an Uber. Uh, anyway, you, so you know it, they're going to get that, and they're going to go, "Oh, this is wonderful! This is terrific!" But they don't realize that the next step is going to be the government's going to say, "Well, now that we've given away all this money in taxes, a oh, big deal. We need. We don't have the money for Medicare. We don't have the money for Medicaid. We don't have money for children for ch the chip program. We don't." And then they're going to try and take that away from us. And we want that's, we want that, that's exactly what's coming next. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, then why don't you give us a tax increase? And when I'm an old fart, give me some money, okay? <laughs> give the money to the poor. Well, they, the poor will spend the money. I'll, I'll tell you right now. I got an attitude about this. They take away Medicare. They take away Social Security. They try to do that kind of. Thing. They can't take away Social Security. It's my money. You know, it's mine. Yeah. I put well, into it. entitlements, but uh, they they think that that's a, my, a a good spin to call it entitlement. My ex-wife Ronnie came up with a better term for it: earned benefits. Ah, uh, is that is like it not that. an earned benefit? Earned benefits. Yeah, but they call it entitlements because they want to put a lousy. It's, spin it's on. all right. We're entitled. We paid in. We are entitled to them. And I'm fucking they damn entitled. entitled. Yeah. I, how much money did I put into taxes to this fucking country? Only to wind up getting Trump. You know, uh, they say you get what you pay for, but I never got what I paid for. Because stupid people get the vote. Yeah. Yeah. But I anyway, think right. There should be a literacy test. Anyway, what I figure, here's what we do is we start an old people army. OK. And and what we do is we get like all the terminally cancerous patients and we make them human bombs. <laughs> OK, we start doing we start being terrorists ourselves because we, they're trying to kill us by taking away Medicare. And that's what they're doing. They're essentially yeah. killing us. Yeah. And unless you got money to stay alive, you're dead. So. Okay, strap a bomb to yourself and go somewhere and blow up something. Or a phony bomb. Yeah, well, I mean, but we're really dangerous because we have nothing to lose, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I just think that uh, they should not fuck with old people. And I don't... <laughs> <laughs> and I say that as a elderly gentleman who just At, turned... Yes, I just I, turned, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Well, not really. I'm 78 now. When's your birthday? December 18th. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Nothing. What'd you do for your birthday? Uh, nothing. Oh, no, we went to dinner. We had a, my wife and I go to a restaurant every year. Same restaurant. Uh, same restaurant? Yeah, Gotham Street Bar and Grill. Oh, uh, I love the Gotham Street Bar and Grill. Yeah, it's beautiful. And uh, expensive, but beautiful. Uh, uh, and I, I it, it's, it's nice dining, okay? But uh, uh, it's funny. I talk about this on stage that uh, I live in one of the best restaurant cities in America and in, in the city of San Francisco. And Debbie and I end up eating at the same six restaurants <clears throat> because we know where to park. Because you know where to park. <laughs> so anyway, um, here's the thing. The, big, the biggest story of the year, supposedly, this is what they say is the biggest story of the year 
is uh, uh, the uh, the women's movement, the Me Too thing. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. silence breakers. Yeah. And and I had to go way too far. All right, I'm in uh, Costco, and there's this woman in front of me. It's there's a line for the checkout, and this woman in front of me, and she's over to the side looking at some dresses or something like that while the line is going way up. And I go, huh, huh, okay, oh, oh, sorry. And there she goes. Then she goes a little bit more, and then she's off to the side again looking at stuff while the line is going. I don't say anything, but she come, finally comes back to, oh, I'm, hmm. Uh, and she goes in. Now we're in, I'm one, she's in front of me, and I'm in back of her, and now we're right in the front where we're, the next thing is going to a counter, right? And she's over to the side looking at stuff. And I'm, and finally I said, by the way, why don't you stay with your cart so you can go check out? And she says, she starts giving me a bad time about it. You know, like, well, no, there's nobody moving yet, blah, 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 blah. And she, um, and I went, well, you know, I said, you should have a little more consideration for the people that are in line with you. And she says, you're just a mean old man. Oh, wow. And I said, you're a bitch. And then she <laughs> says, that's. She says, move your cart back. You're too close to me. I said, no, I won't. I'm right where I should be. And she then yells at the, uh, the people in the checkout line, I'm being harassed over here. I'm, ha wow. I'm being sexually harassed over here. Wow. And I went, wow. you, what? And the people, of course, at the checkout thing, they don't want anything to do with this little flap. So they don't even pay attention to her. But it just showed me that the I'm problem being is sexually harassed. Yeah, I'm being harassed. Well, I think harassed is what she, I don't think she used the term sexually, but she said I've been I'm being harassed over here, and all I could and then I looked at her and I went, me too, me too, you know. <laughs> so well, at least you're not being politically correct in your old age. Well, no, I mean I think this whole me too thing's gone a little too far when somebody like this diminishes the meaning of it with some kind of trivia like this. You know, it's gotten to that point where we're getting awfully trivial with it. I am so mad at Kirsten Gillibrand, I will never vote for her another day in my life because of what she did to Franken. To Val Franken. I mean, it was disgusting. He was a sacrificial lamb. He did nothing. You know, he sh he should have he should have gone down the the Trump road. Yeah, because Trump would have explained it away as uh, he was a comic. That's when he his job was to make people laugh, and he was being silly. That's yeah. what he was. he was being silly, and that's what it was. You can write that off. I wonder page. if it, it, Franken gave up so easily. I wonder if he gave up easily because he didn't want the job anymore. Or there was something else lurking. I don't think there was anything else lurking because it would have shown it reared its ugly head anyway because this stuff keeps rearing its ugly head. But they, they really had nothing much on him. There was some woman at a state fair who said he patted her ass or something when they were taking a selfie. Yeah. You did know. he ask to take the selfie or did she ask to take the well, selfie? Well, I mean, you know... If I'm in politics now, no more selfies, <laughs> you know, because you, you, you can make, all you can do is make interpretations of where your hand is in the photo. They could say anything. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that the, that the, uh, the Me Too thing went a little too far, that it's gotten, gone to the point of, uh, of being, of, that there are too many of these things that it's making it trivial? No. You don't think so? <laughs> I think everything has a pendulum swing. Yeah. And I think I think we were way over here and nobody was saying anything and now everybody's saying everything. And uh I thought Garrison Keeler and Al Franken uh, were sacrifi sacrifices that men had to make. Well, I had Keeler had already kind of retired anyway, hadn't he? Well, you know the story. It was so he uh he was consoling a woman. Mhm. Mm and I forget over what, but he was consoling the woman, <clears throat> and his hand touched her back, and she wasn't. She had a bare back, whatever piece of clothing she had, and she recoiled when he touched her, and he apologized, and she accepted his apology, and then her lawyer called. <laughs> That's how he explains it. Yeah. 
and he's 75 and he said i i'm just quitting i don't care i'm too old to fight about it yeah and so, so i think he should have fought about it but they've changed that whole show and now they're not calling it uh uh, they're not calling it uh, uh, Prairie Home Companion anymore. They're, they changed the name after he, after he, you know, got out and and they're not doing reruns of Prairie Home Companion. It's all this new show. I love how how they how they've exercised people from things like Spacey in that movie, you know, and and going out oh, of the was it? Huh? Did you see no, that? I yet? didn't. I didn't see it yet. But you know, come on. You know, because I've had people tell me that, <coughs> excuse me, they watched that movie trying to figure out how they took Spacey out and put Plummer in, and how he interacted. Yeah. Yeah, but that I I think I think it'll all fade away. Uh, there'll there'll always be a, a residue well, he, or well, you a see residual. The, the, the 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 essence of this shouldn't fade away. Okay, no, no. you know, I mean, I, I, as a male, it's a renewed consciousness. It's I was, like, I was it's raised by environmentalism. My, you know, I was I'm raised. By, well, I was raised by my father never to, uh, never to, uh, uh, to always treat women properly, and to never do anything to make them feel uncomfortable. Okay, so I have that in my DNA. All right. Although I'm sure there's somebody, if I had a name, who would come forward and say he, you know. He gave me drugs and then we fucked. Well, yeah, yeah, you asked for them and I gave them to you. I had them and I wanted to get laid. So, you know, come on, I'm I'm a good host. <laughs> you know? But uh, I've always, I've never, I've always been bothered by guys who, you know, spoke a certain way about women and so on and the kind of attitude some guys had towards women and about getting laid. I've always been more of a gentleman than that. So I I, re, I feel that, yes, a, a change did need to happen. It should have happened years and years and years ago. Uh, but, um, you know, there was always the option to say no. Women could say no. They say, well, he was too powerful. Well, you, but you had the option to say no. You obviously wanted something out of him because he had this power. And so you went along with whatever the program was. I mean, there's a particular actress, I won't say who, who fucked Harvey Weinstein to get a part in a movie and won an Academy Award for it. Okay? So, I mean, let's not... You know, and then, of course, there was Meryl Streep. Oh, I am shocked that Harvey Weinstein was doing this kind of behavior. I say give her the Academy Award this year just for that performance. Apparently, because, Harvey never hit on her. But no, because there was nobody in Hollywood that didn't know about Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. And I feel sorry for Louis C.K., okay? You know, before he pulled his dick out, he asked them if they minded if he pulled his dick out. <laughs> and nobody in the room said no. And then when he pulled it out, they didn't leave. Well, I imagine a couple people did. No. According to the stories, none of them left. So, you know, so his entire career is, is, is killed because he's getting the same death sentence that Harvey Weinstein is getting. And they're not even comparable no, to not each other. Comparable, no. Yeah. No. So, I mean, what is it? There's one penalty for all? I'm sorry. You know, I, I disagree with that. And Frank and, Franken's a perfect example of that. Well, look at this. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking here, more than usual. No. Yes. I've ruined no, I've, I've ruined your day. You could be out of here and and doing all kinds of Are you working much this month? Um well, because we got uh, five more dates for the Big Fat Year and Kiss Off Comedy Show. Yeah. So we'll be we uh, start again tomorrow. We go through Sunday. We're do we're finishing up at Cobbs. Um Cobbs Comedy Club on Columbus on Sunday the 7th. Yeah, and then we go to Hawaii for ten days, and then we come back and there's a couple of gigs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So you're working. That's fine. I'm working. You know. I'm working. And uh, yeah, the Bubs have been trying to work on getting me to come back to San Francisco to do a, a round of shows around the Bay. Do a area. reunion. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking of doing. Uh, and this year I'll probably get it together and and we'll come back that to San Francisco and do like a week and go up to Sonoma and then over to somewhere else in the East yeah, Bay yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Some, and finally wind up in San Francisco like a Cobbs or somewhere like that. So, you know. 
Sign me up. Why not? Why not? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Will Durst. And if you ever see that he's playing in your neighborhood, uh, uh, let your children know to stay Wander away. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your younger brother. <laughs> it, it, you just got to. You just got to go see him because he's uh, he's uh, the best political comic I know of. And has been fearless at it for years and years and years and years. He didn't just become a political comic yesterday because everything. someone gave him a show. Somebody no, gave him I, a show. Uh, exactly. I clawed my way to the middle. He clawed his way to the middle, and mediocrity is his game. No, uh, no, you're hardly. You're hardly <laughs> I'm more than adequate. You're hard, You're more than adequate. You're hardly. Uh, anyway. Hey, I love the hell out of you, and thanks for the the last year being on this program. And I hope we see you again throughout this year as well. In a couple of weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Will Durst. Thank you kindly, sir. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's our old friend, uh, Will Durst, and uh, we love having him here. Uh, I got to get used to something here. <laughs> I, went out, I went out and did something today uh, a, a different. Uh, I... Uh, I decided to buy myself a little gift, at least for doing this show all the time. Uh, and uh, so the gift I got myself, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me just turn things up here so I can hear myself. All right. Okay. Anyway, uh, I, uh, I got myself, I can't show it to you, uh, but for some odd and unusual reason, Alex went out and bought a 20, oh, wait a minute, excuse me, a 32-inch monitor. So I do this show in front of a 32-inch monitor. The only problem is it, it looks the same as the smaller monitor where everything was still in the same amount of space, but it's just all bigger now. And for me to go out and get this to, to be even use more of the, of the real estate on it, I've got to get another card, and most of the cards need at least a 300-watt power supply and uh, I've only got a 230 in this machine and 230 in the other one. So I haven't figured out what to do yet. But I, I've got big pictures here, and I'm being somewhat overwhelmed by it. So uh, please excuse me if I'm overwhelmed. Anyway, let me, uh, let me put uh, our uh, Skype lines online so that you can call if you so desire. We would love to hear from you. Uh, this is a little thing we do called uh, the... Uh, the um, um, the citizens panel and it's very simple to join uh, just go over to gabnet.net excuse me folks i'm looking at all different things uh, at gabnet.net and uh, and uh, ch check us out and it tells you there how to do all of this okay gabnet.net tells you how to how to get onto the citizens panel how you get skype but it's very it's a very simple and very complete tutorial so you need not worry about things um also, there's one other thing. I've got, because it's taller, the camera is up higher, so I have to kind of go like this in order to look into the camera. So if I'm not looking into the camera a lot of the time, I'm sorry, you know. Ah, well, anyway, so is anybody going to call? I mean, we were on vacation for what? How long were we on vacation for? Uh... Uh, it seems like forever, but it was it wasn't long enough. Okay, uh, we were off for a week, basically a week and a couple of days, uh, and uh, here we are, ready and willing to go. Uh, so um, actually, it was more like a week and a half actually that we didn't have to do anything. Okay, let me see here. Phil is the first person to come in on my big screen. Let me show you him. There he is. Ah, uh, hi there, uh, Phil. Hey. Uh, Happy New Year. You too. And uh, uh, so what kind of 32 did you get? It's just uh, what, a Dell. Dell. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. I have a Dell 30, and uh, I yeah. know what you mean. It's almost too much monitor. Yeah. yeah. But I got it because I, if I can somehow overcome this, uh, this thing with the, another um, uh, graphics card, and uh, I can get one that works with the kind of power I have here. Um, by the way, whoever is calling right now, uh, you better not, uh, you're using, you're trying to call on something else, okay? So, you know, 
you're not calling on the right thing. Hey, look, somebody's here that we haven't seen in a while, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Shuck. Hello, Dave. Hello, hello. Trying to get my stuff set back up. Yeah. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing fine. Uh, it's got two things on my screen. He's what? He, he's showing up twice. Not what? only is his well, photo, but as a camera. Well, I have no idea why, because it's not happening here, and that's all that matters. <laughs> No, that's all that matters because that's what this is what goes out to the people out there. Yeah. There you go. Hey, Rob, how are you? Hey, scary New Year to everybody. Uh, scary New Year to you too. Um, you. Uh, uh, did we all enjoy our New Year? Oh, we just lost Dave. What happened there? Uh, oh. Because I clicked on the picture and oh, well, I tried to get rid of the picture. Well, thank you. But why should I be able to have? I have I no idea. All right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Skype. Ah, yeah. Okay, He's here come comes Dave. Therapy. Did you get hung up on Dave? Is that what I happened? have no idea. Suddenly, I was just sitting here, and all of a sudden, it went back to a welcome to Skype screen. Mm, well, yeah. Right. Uh, that, that was that was fault. he he hung up on you, uh, uh, Phil. I don't know how he I did it. The the screen and and just have the the video and not the picture. Yeah. So. Anyway, let's let's not talk about the sins of of uh, of Skype. Uh, well, you know, I'm getting I'm getting a new computer, and uh, it can run three Thunderbolt uh, 4K screens at once. So, uh, well, are you going to go out and get three Thunderbolt 4K screens at three th at two thousand uh, dollars a piece? No, I'm just going to uh, run oh, my 30 inch Dell and call oh, it a okay. day on HDMI. So, you know. Yeah. But uh, but it can. The video card that's coming with it is the AMD D700. Yeah, uh, it's, so uh, it's, uh, that's standard uh, with the Pro. Uh, no, the it's standard's the 300. Oh, 300, okay. Well, have fun. You have no reason to have a machine that powerful. I do, but you don't. Yeah, well, you know, I, I need the power. <laughs> Why do you need the power? Yeah, I gotta you, have the power. You don't need the power. Hello, Jeff Stein. Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's just check in with everybody here and see what happened on their uh, on their little holidays. Uh, what did you do, Jeff, during the fallow period here on Gabnet? Well, uh, the the big thing is uh, my daughter and her husband and two granddaughters showed up unexpected. For about three days, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Oh, okay, it was fun. That, that wasn't so a problem. Was In other words, you're not saying that was a problem. No, no. Well, somebody else, they were going to go see somebody else, and they got sick. Oh. I think I think a lot of people are having a flu and whatever. Marjorie and, uh, was sick for three weeks. She finally went to the doctor, and he said, "I think you have a uh, 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 what do you call it, a uh, uh, chest infection or whatever." And uh, he gave her antibiotic and uh, took the antibiotic about a week to really work, but she finally got rid of it. But it was horrible. It was I didn't get it. Everybody in her office got this cold that turned in. One guy got pneumonia from it, you know. Uh, so give she, she got yeah she got bronchitis, you know, uh, yeah. viral bronchitis. So. Did he give her the Zithromax those no. uh, five days? No, no, she gave her. Uh, I can't remember what it was now. That was, um, chicken fat. Huh? Fat-free chicken fat? Fat-free chicken fat, yeah. yeah. I had a doctor once. I, I said to him, I said, is it true that chicken soup does work? And he said, no, it's minestrone. I'm Italian. Jew <laughs> 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 has an Italian for a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, is this Jew had an Italian for a doctor. All right. Boy, you all look great on this big screen I got here. You know, oh, I can just lean back. It's like watching television. But uh, <laughs> and that let's see here. Now, uh, 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 Rob, what did you do? Uh, what did I do? I know you came up to New York, vac right? I was on vacation from the Friday. We left on Saturday morning really early and spent Saturday, Sunday and Monday in New York. Um, came back on Tuesday and I uh, relaxed. I didn't do very much of anything. I bought a pool table so I, I did some research into that and, and 
went around looking at the tables and it'll be installed this coming Friday. So this isn't something you got to bargain on or got on eBay or whatever. This is a uh, uh, Craig. No, I got it on Craigslist. Really? Yeah. That uh, hell of a deal on a really nice, now, solid. Now, my question is, do you like to play pool or just fuck on them? I like to play pool. Oh, you I, like to play pool. <laughs> I don't want to fuck on it because it's too dangerous. It, it, really? On the table. Well, you can get your balls racked. Well, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to snap the, the, the slate. Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, slap. Yeah. Sna slap the snake. Slap, uh, anyway, so what did you do? What did you do on New Year then? Uh, New Year's, uh, you know, we just all moved in here in like September, October. So everybody's new. And uh, we have a web page on Facebook. I don't have it. My wife What, your cul-de-sac or whatever? Two cul-de-sacs. We have two cul-de-sacs here, these two streets. Yeah. And uh, there was a big party down the street in one of the houses, and we had a blast. Really? So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Right. It was, and no driving, right? Just walk down the street. Best way to do it. It was a, it was a great time. We had a, I haven't had that much fun on New Year's Eve in a long time. Got some great neighbors. So. How about you, Patrick? What did you do? Hung out with family. Um for Christmas and then uh, New Year's. Um, just hung out by myself, which is the way I like it. Yeah. You know, you know mm -hmm. and um, that was pretty much it. Just pretty quiet uh, week and a half or whatever this has been. Um, and then uh, I just got home from dinner with a former teacher of mine. So mm -hmm. I guess that would be Probably the most exciting thing that I did because it's been too damn fucking cold here in Wisconsin. It's been below zero every day for the last week. Yeah. So today it was actually 10 degrees, so I went out. Well, it's been terrible Shorts for us weather. too. We'll talk about this in a while, a little bit. Uh, uh, Phil, what did you do? Uh, let's see. Uh, Friday, I uh, was that the 30th? Oh, Saturday was the thirtieth, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, uh, I mean, yeah. no. If you're talking, I'm talking about it, it, it was Christmas. You forget about Christmas. You know, you have to report about Christmas here. Oh, it was the weekend, right? Yeah. Well, Previous weekend. Oh, oh, Christmas. I don't know what the hell I did for Christmas. I went to a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> we were going to go to a Chinese restaurant with my friend Jack and Natalia, but unfortunately, girlfriend was so sick that we yeah. we couldn't do it. And uh, Jack wasn't feeling that well either. So we four and I've never had Chinese food on New Year's. You and I before I die, I have to do it. or I don't go to Jew heaven. Now, you never went to any of those Kung Pao uh, comedy things uh, that they would do on Christmas? No, they competed with me. Oh, OK. Uh, Lisa, whatever her name was. Uh, Lisa Godaldig. Yeah. Now, how can I remember a name like that, <laughs> but I can't remember the name of somebody, you know, that I know personally for years? Right. Like, what's his name right there? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's see. That was Christmas, and it was pretty good. They didn't have any MSG in their uh, Chinese food. I was very happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I, uh, I got together with John Means on uh, Saturday mm -hmm. and shot a show for him. And then, uh, uh, was it uh, Sunday, I think? Yeah, Sunday I went shooting uh, automatic weapons. And, uh, oh, that's, well, that's great. Saw the pictures of that, Phil. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, my buddy's got a... You said uh, that, Rob, with a little bit of disdain. With <laughs> 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 his ten and a half inch barrel? He is, in, for people listening to the radio version of this, he nodded his head yes. It cost me seven dollars and twenty three cents every time I pulled the trigger. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> can't yeah. think of a worse get, way to spend money. <laughs> get a life fill. Yeah. Jeez, Almighty. Anyway, I yes, saw the picture too. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> what are you going to say? I'm totally no. unimpressed. Wait a minute. Phil posted a picture. It's a gorgeous gun. I mean, oh. for, I love M4s, and, yeah. and it's it just it's a gorgeous gun, and it, the sight setup looked great. So. I was sitting there jerking off to it. <laughs> and I, I rubbed a good one off. It was, it was automatic, too. So. It was well, automatic. provided free by the county of Contra Costa. Mm -hmm. uh, my butt. <laughs> Dave, what did you do? 
Um, I've had the most amazing sinus infection. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, that, yeah, it's yeah. been it's been excruciating. I'm still just blood and grossness coming out of my face. Oh, that's but wonderful. Also, I hope you do it here on the show because there's nothing better I, than I, a little blood and spit. A sputum is good. Sputum is very blood good. Sputum. I think, you know what? I used to be in a band called Blood and Sputum. No, <laughs> no I wasn't. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been, it was minus eight. Uh, so wind chill, uh, 18 below. Mm -hmm. That's nice. uh, that's ugly. Yeah, that is ugly. You don't want to go outside. Even the dogs would be like, I think I'm just going to hold it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been cold and miserable. And I'm just waiting for my public trust certification to go through so that I can get to work for Noah. Yeah, good. And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Allen, what uh, what what did you do? Well, Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas uh, Eve, Mom cooked a prime rib, small prime rib. First time she cooked a prime rib, mm -hmm. turned out perfect. Christmas Day, we went over to a friend of mine's house. New Year's Eve, we went over to a friend of mine's house, had oysters. Had his oysters and clam and spaghetti feet for New Year's, which was, oh, God, it was good. Yeah. Well, uh, on our New our Christmas, it was all, as I said, sputum and blood. Uh, was, she was very sick uh, and uh, was trying to get over it. She was sleeping like eight in, uh, 16 hours a day. Mm. That's yeah, I, I well, we had a, I had a little preview of what it's going to be like when we get a little bit older here down the road in our marriage, uh, in which, uh, you know, I'm going to try to learn to sleep at the same time she does. So while we're awake, we can talk to each other. That's something we're planning on doing. <laughs> uh, and um, so we really didn't do that much for uh, for Christmas at all. And then the Christmas week, again, she was still sick. And uh, so I just sat in here and got cabin fever. It started to uh, get really cold. And, uh, you know, for some reason, our, our landlord is very stingy with the heat. So um, we stayed bundled up in the house. Um, Did those just fireplaces uh, that you, you showed online show any, uh, give you any heat? Yeah, they do. But I don't. The it only works. time you saw them were the two times I lit them up one night. I lit a small one, uh, and she sat in front of it, and uh, it was such a nice thing. I took a picture, and then the uh, New Year's Eve, I always put a fire on in the fireplace, and I made a really good one. There was no smoke. It was perfect. It, uh, it worked just fine, and on New Year's Eve, we had our friend Jack and Natalia, and Shecky came over, and Shecky comes over every year. And uh, I made uh, my ribs. So, you know, uh, I cooked dinner. Out burning fireplaces like that in an apartment is, got a, is, is such a luxury. Well, um, I not only have one, I have two of them. Yeah. But one on well, the other side in the dining room. You only need one. You huh? only need one. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of boarding up one of them just to keep you happy. Uh, okay. No, I never have lit the other one because it's in the dining room and it's too close to the dinner table. And if you ate dinner and the fire was going on in the fireplace nobody would be able to sit on that side of the table yeah. so i uh i just uh i just do it on the one side and uh i i it was a good fire this year because i i had a problem for years with smoke coming backing up into the place and everything and then i got this thing you put in the fireplace to lower the uh flu the the the, the, the space or something and it pushes it up towards the flu but I was still having some kind of troubles with that, uh, but I didn't uh, this year. This year, the it was almost smokeless. I mean, it just went straight up the flue, and it was a great fire. And you, I haven't even had a picture there of it. You know, yeah, gorgeous, good, good looking one. You know, yeah. I know how to I know how to build a good fire. What Presto log? No, well, no, <laughs> I use that as a starter. Believe it or not, you know, I, I cheat to that extent. But no, there's wood, and it's yeah. how you bank the wood. It makes for a nice fire. It makes that's it look what girls good. say. Hmm? That's it's the wood. Ah, you bank the wood. Yes, it's <laughs> it's very important. Banking the wood is massive. Anyway, so that was my that was my new year, and uh, so now all that stuff is over with, and we can all get back to the normal things of life, like oh, our court battles and dealing with Trump. Yes, Patrick. <laughs> Nuclear proliferation. Oh, listen, there was a quote. Can, uh, yes, uh, go ahead, uh, Patrick. I have a quote here from Trump. I got to read you guys. Go ahead. Um, 
I forgot to add, for my New Year's, I watched what most people would consider one of the most boring films in history, Das Boot. So I'm, that's another reason I'm doing it alone. Oh, I see, because nobody else wants to watch Das Boot with you. That's not that, have, yeah. uh movie so isn't it in german and it has uh yeah it's, a, yeah, it's in german yeah and it's claustrophobic as shit movie uh it's a great movie but um uh, yeah nobody nobody within the sound of my voice would watch it with me even if they had an ability to so in fact they avoid you at all costs on new year's so you they don't have to watch das boot with you i uh, uh what we did so far as movies are concerned a couple of things i want to recommend uh, we got our screeners from uh, SAG AFTRA, uh, and we watched a couple of them. We watched uh, the James Franco film, The Disaster Artist, uh, which is an interesting movie. It's a, it's okay. It's not great. Uh, three billboards in uh, some place, Hebbing. I can't remember what state. Uh, and it's it was Francis McDormand. It's a very good film. It's a terrific. It's a good, really good film. But it's not. I don't think great. Her performance is terrific. Um, then we watched. Uh, we watched uh, the Darkest Hour. The thing about Churchill. Boy, is that a snoozer. It's really not a very good movie. And his Churchill makeup seems to change throughout the entire picture. And it's not that he's getting any older as the film is going. They just didn't put it on right every day. Some days Sigmar it looked Elton. well. Some days you say, "Gee, I can't even see Gary Oldman in that makeup," you know. And then other times you go, "Oh yeah, there's a Gary Oldman." So what do they do? They, they lighten the makeup one day. So I, but it, it, it's not a very, it's not a great film. We watched I Tanya. Uh, what's her name? The woman that was on West Wing and is now on uh, Mom. Uh, I'm trying to remember her name now. My mind's a blank. She's very good in that film. Um, oh, redhead? Huh? No. No, tall. Oh, uh, uh, I'll remember her name shortly, especially if I go to IMDb. And let me see here. What else? Uh, uh, and then we uh, uh, we watched... Um, oh, then. but our favorite picture, believe it or not, of the ones we saw, although our favorite picture still remains this year, uh, the... Uh, this, the uh, um, what is it? The scent of water? What is it? What is the name of it? Uh, the, the shape of water. Shape of shape, water. Shape of water. Shape in the water? The shape of water. Uh, is still our favorite. But we saw. I saw this picture that was nominated, and they sent us a copy, but I watched it on Netflix because it's on Netflix, and it's called The Big Sick, and it's very good. It's a very likable, very good film. So if you get a chance, if you've got Netflix or whatever, uh, the Big Sick is a good bet. And then we watched uh, this thing on Netflix, uh, the latest season of Black Mirror. Mm. Anybody seen this f series before? I, I saw the first season. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, the, it's kind of like a, a Twilight Zone about technology. Uh, every every show, every it's a different story every episode, but it it they all have to do in some way with technology. And incredibly dark very dark and the episode that is just i think the best one they've ever done is one about uh, a killer mechanical dog chasing a woman for 45 oh. minutes it's oh it's God. really good it's really really good because they designed this dog to just be just it's just it's scary uh, you know and it's very hard to scare somebody when they're watching a tv set at home you know, is that a me too kind of thing? Hmm. It's a hashtag me too, chasing yeah. a woman for forty five minutes. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So uh, that, that, those are the things I recommend that we sat and watched. We watched a lot of stuff, just a lot of stuff. Yes, Dave. Did you watch uh, Shine? No. no, Bright. That was what it was. Bright. Bright. I hear. I I got warned that it's terrible. I thought it was fantastic. Really? Um, I read all the reviews where they said that it was just a complete waste of time and it was miserable and horrible. I think it's one of the best things I've seen Will Smith do in a long time. Not that he does a lot of stuff that these days, but yeah. uh, I thought it was I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I'm, I was really glad to hear that they uh, already bought a second season. Hmm. Well, there's, no, there's just one film. Or not a season, uh, a second episode next Christmas. Oh, 
Well, okay, but I stayed away from it because they spent a hundred million dollars on that thing. It's it's, I I think I think it's as good as as uh, any any movie any good blockbuster that you'd see in the in the theater. Yeah, um, well, there aren't many good blockbusters that you can see in the theater. <laughs> you know, in, in in that case, it was the best one of the best action movies I've seen as a theater thing in in a long time. I thought it was great. And I'm really looking forward to the next one. The two things I've gotten tired of are movies that say they're based on a true story, and 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 these comic book movies. They just they just don't do anything anymore. They just sit there and lie there on the screen. Hey, there's a third uh, for you: Netflix originals. Well, I they they oversell that term Netflix originals. You know. If I took a dump in the toilet and videotaped it and they decided to run it, they'd make it a Netflix original. It would be. <laughs> it would be. It would definitely be. So anyway, I got a quote for you. This is, this is, I just saw this before we came on the, uh, on the air tonight. And I said, I can't go without saying, you know, I can't go on without saying this, okay? The latest Trump um, tweet. tweet. President Trump to North Korea's Kim Jong-un, all right? My nuclear button is much bigger and more powerful than yours. I love it. I love it. He is so good. What uh, do you he knows how to deal with Kim Jong-un. Oh, 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 really? I mean, yeah. it, it, doesn't that sound vaguely familiar to something else you might say? Yeah, but the thing is, Kim Jong-un has said that he's willing to negotiate <coughs> for borders with South Korea. He wants to send his athletes no, he's to not, South he Korea. Want, he doesn't want to negotiate over borders. He wants to negotiate over whether he will send people to the Olympics or not, and well, that they they would be willing to do it, And it, but they have to have talks. There's also uh, some issues over, uh, not over where the border is, but tensions on the border. So, uh, you know, this, this button thing and this kind of uh, rhetoric seems to be working uh, as well as. Well, I don't want you know, to admit, because in the last couple of days, Kim Jong un has shown a desire to talk. Right. Okay. Why do you then put out a tweet that says, my button is bigger than your button? Because it's all part of the, it's all part of the program. You know, it's he's, childish. Uh, so is Kim Jong Un, except he's got nuclear weapons. Well, that and makes him very fire. unchildish. That's, that's yes, uh, uh, Jeff. Jeff, did you have your Trump hand up? Trump has nuclear stuff too. Yeah, but if he fires, and it he all, says bigger than assholes, as either one. Yeah, Man, I agree. I, I, I don't think you're seeing the uh, the, the light. Uh, no, but, uh, but the, 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 thank the, God. It's like two kids. The yeah, the tone of this of this tweet is just so is so childish. Good. At, no, not good. He's the president of fucking United States, right. Phil. But the end result is what happens. It, you know, everybody's been doing it the same way for years. Obama, he, he oh, I don't want to go near these uh, uh, Koreans. You know, uh, they got kimchi. You know, and. Uh, then Trump is finally doing something, and it seems to be working. It's starting a dialogue, no matter how childish it is. And the other thing is, it's, not, it's uh, starting a dialogue. Pakistan. What? How is name calling a dialogue? Uh, well, no, wait a minute. What do you say, pa Pakistan, <clears throat> Phil? Pakistan? Are you sure about that? Let me tell you about Pakistan. What about it? Uh, today. They said that uh, they were going to uh, U.S. was going to withhold 253 million dollars yeah, oh, okay. in, in funds because Pakistan's been playing both sides of the uh, of the street, and uh, so you know they told Pakistan, "Look, you harbor and you support uh, the uh, ISIS rebels and Afghani rebels." Uh, and uh, against the United States, and then with the other hand, you take our money and you give us a little bit. Well, it's not going to work that way. You don't get it. So it's America first. So we got two hundred and fifty-three million. I think that they can put towards the wall. Trump in twenty twenty. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Power to the people. <laughs> oh boy. If if there's if he gets elected again, I'm praying for death. You yeah. have to pray for it, huh? You won't be worrying about praying for it. 
It's going to come. It's funny. I, he can get money for a wall. He can get money for a really rather moderate tax break for the people. Okay. Uh, but somehow he can't find money for Medicare, CHIP programs, Social Security, because that's what they're going to hit next, you know. Oh, that's your, that's your friend in uh, uh, that's McConnell and the uh, and Ryan that uh, want to go there. Uh, Trump said that he wants to handle entitle uh, work with entitlements. They're not called and, not entitlements on this program. They're no longer entitlements. They're earned benefits. No, no, welfare is an entitlement. But well, but but he also they also <laughs> think of Social <laughs> Security and Medicare as entitlements. And you're damn right, I'm entitled to it. I paid for it. Trump said he wasn't touching it. Uh, and uh, uh, no I'll, be what, I'll believe that I'm when sure. I see it. Well, I'd like to see Ryan uh, send up something that takes money away from Medicare, and I guarantee he you, will. I don't think Trump he will. will sign it. He will. Don't worry about it. He will. You'll have an excuse. He, 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 he already took the money away from the UN already. Yeah, great. And that and 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 Why? With, and with well, because uh, they condemned Israel. And uh, he said, uh, "Look, if if you if you don't want us, if you want our money, and you uh, you know, then um, Trump is stupid. He should not say that Jerusalem is the capital, which is not. Is still Tel Aviv. I don't give a damn what he says. Look how many he's countries. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, well, he's he he he's a bullshit artist. Uh, yes, uh, Rob." Well, so, Phil, are you ready to give up? Are you ready to give up influ the American influence around the world? Are you ready to take a back seat to other countries? We don't have American influence around the world. We got a bunch of guys that are playing us as no, suckers, no, taking no. out money and, no, and, no, no, and no. burning off flags. Everybody starts looking and, out at their own best interests and not the United States' interests. What are you going to do? Well, this is I, a global world we live in. It, is, it doesn't make a difference. They're going to burn our flags. No, give a no, damn about no. It, go. We can take we can take away the money, but then they're going to take away our airfields and all the places that we're entrenched in. All those countries you're talking about, Phil. And you don't think that those airfields uh, give so much uh, monetary support to those countries? You don't think the Saudis? So they're going to they're going to tell us to get the fuck out. Uh, I, I'd like to see that and the Saudis don't need our money. Okay, they got enough of their own. They're going to move in Chinese air bases, and they're going to move in Russian air bases. So they'll have the same kind of money coming in. And the Iraqis, uh, not the Iraqis, the uh, the Iranians are already protesting. Twenty people have been killed. Uh, they've stopped Twitter and. Facebook in that country because they don't want social media to get out as to what's happening with that oppressive regime. Well, so, what so is be it, so, is the sanctions are working. So be it. So working. be it for peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Exactly. Yeah, well, uh, I guess Christmas is over with now. Uh, oh, by the way, you do know that Trump made money over New Year's, don't you? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, you know all the money uh, he uh, stayed at his hotel in uh, Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah, and the rate's pretty high there. Yeah, well, did you did you know what they did at Mar-a-Lago while he was there? They had a very like, expensive New Year's party. They have a New Year's uh, New Year's there every year, and this year it was exceptionally expensive, and he made a fortune. Hmm. Is that right for him to make money like that off the presidency? Do you feel comfortable with that, Phil? Yeah. Oh, okay. I figured you would. Yeah, who paid for it? It was the people that belonged to that club. Yeah, I mean, this is just pure profit. This was no fundraiser, or anything else. Yeah, well, you know, they I, okay. So what happened was there are members that belong to that club, and they have a New no, Year's no, celebration. No, no, no. These were outside people who come in and pay money every year because they want to have a New Year's at Mar-a-Lago. Oh, that's that's nice. I wish I was down there. It's cold here. It's almost fifth. When's he going to divest himself of all the stuff or put it into a blind trust? Look, Bush went to Waco or wherever his ranch was. His father went uh, up to uh, No, 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 Maine no, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the fact that he went to Mar-a-Lago. I'm talking about the fact that while he was there, he made money at Mar-a-Lago. Tell. It's a hotel. Well, he should divest himself of it for the time being so that he what? can't uh, be influenced by those profits. That's right. I doubt he's being influenced by those profits. Oh, bull. <laughs> Kool Aid yeah. must taste really good. Here nice. is a president. Here is a. Wait a minute. Here is a, wait a minute. Hey, Phil. Here is a president who, since he, he's become president, has not cared one iota 
one iota about uh, about revealing his taxes or putting his stuff in a blind trust. In other words, he's 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 refusing to do any of those things, and that's considered the proper thing to do. It's considered the good thing to do. It's considered the ethical ethical it, thing it, to is do. Is it the law? No, but it's the ethical okay. thing to do. It's, it's the, it's, it isn't the law. It's the, he's not breaking any laws. It's the ethical thing to do. In your mind. How many no. people raise their hand who are here? Raise your hand if you feel that uh, uh, it's it's unethical uh, not Dave doing that. Gets two votes. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody yeah. here except See? for you, Phil, and one of them's a Republican. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, hey, by the way, uh, Dave Chuck just showed us his daughter who is there. Uh, she's uh, uh, going to get her sick. Hi. Hmm? Oh yeah, don't. Yeah, hi, how are you? I'm good. Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Did you get any good presents? Yeah, I got a full-on microscope. A full-on microscope, man! I would have gone crazy oh. for that when I was a kid. I got a microscope as a kid, and I was just, I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it too. Yeah. So, what do you look at in the microscope? Well, um, my mom found a bit, a bit of dandruff in her hair and thought it was a bug. <laughs> and so, and so, she asked me to look, so she asked me to look at it and it was dan but, it was surely it was dandruff right oh yeah it was def it didn't have any legs <laughs> at all <laughs> so i know Need legs? what what if it's a what if it's not a it's a legless bug there aren't that would legless be very bugs. weird yeah would be, i don't think those exist yeah phil stupid well, <laughs> Drink. So, so, did you get any other gifts? Uh, yeah, actually, I got a color by number thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and um, I got a crystal growing kit, and it just finished today. Oh, it's growing the crystals. Mhm. Mm and so, what do you do with the crystals once they're grown? You put them on display. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you don't give them to your dad for to smoke? No, no, stop it. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> Phil. Phil. <laughs> so, uh, father of the year, Phil. Huh? Father of the year, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, watch out that when now that she knows how to make crystals, uh, and now that we have Dave here and he's got the earphones on, uh, just make sure she doesn't le learn how to make meth. You know, right, uh, right. <laughs> Dad, can I have some gasoline and uh, Sudafed? What? Um, 55-gallon drum of xylene. <laughs> oh, I, I need to no, ask, she... Dave, what is, what is your uh, uh, moisture level in the house now, your relative humidity? Um, because it's been so cold and my house leaks so much, it doesn't get above uh, above uh, 25. Wow. Well, yeah, that's still... That's, it's been dry and it's painful and you have to keep... Air humidifiers going in every room what one little th brag about my daughter though when they uh she start she decided she wanted to go into public school this year so um instead of being homeschooled so we sent her in the school was convinced that she was going to be an idiot um <laughs> because they're like well you're not a professional educator how could you possibly have taught anybody anything so she's um she's above grade on everything but the most impressive one is uh she scored 11th she, she's in the fifth grade she scored 11th grade in science Wow. I was going to say, she's so wow. science interested. She's absolutely science interested. She's, uh, she's That's a good thing. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Because, um, yeah, we grew this this crystal, and um, she's, you know, she's doing all this research on it, and she's looking stuff up. She, Because um, uh, my father-in-law is, is here, right? So he's always having to stick his finger to do... Uh, uh, his, to check his blood sugars, okay. and so immediately she's like, "Ooh, can I have some of that?" <laughs> Put it on a slab, sitting there, looking at it. That's it's good. cool. The microscope actually, you can hook it up to a to a smartphone, and you can use the whole screen of your smartphone as a as a screen for it. So you don't have to. Once you get it dialed in, you can set it and you can show it to a bunch of people, right? Oh, so you and, can record it, Jeff. And, and then you can also oh, anyway. set your phone to where it's linked to your TV, so we could put it up on the on the uh, on the 4K. Uh, 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 Jeff. Yeah, it's amazing that your daughter, uh, who did not have the opportunity to uh, to get uh, socially, 
uh, talking with a lot of people in school instead of home school. And she's quite articulate. We, we, we all saw that, and it's very obvious. One aspect of homeschool that a lot of people who don't homeschool don't understand mm-hmm. with lots of uh, large groups of other homeschool students. So you get kids that are from uh, kinder, like first grade through high school, mm-hmm. and they're all hanging out together. So she said that when she came to the school, she said it was weird that she was only hanging out with kids that were her age because they were usually not at her level. Oh. Are they going to advance her a grade? Or we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We don't want to. Yeah, we're, we're I, 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 had, I, had ha- I had that happen to me in school when I was a kid. They moved me up a, a whole grade or something because they felt that I was uh, uh, doing too well at the stupider levels, uh, and so they moved me up a year. And um, consequently, I was always the youngest kid in the class. You know, I and I just never, I never felt I entirely fit, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, so I just, and it wasn't because I was smart. It was for some other reason, I think, because they were dumb. Uh, and well, One uh, other bit of, of, of Emily bragging real quick. Uh, she played at a Royals game. She's, she plays the cello. She played at a Royals oh, game. I thought she thought, I thought you mentioned she played the game. <laughs> no. No, no, she she plays she play, she has a cello and uh, so she got to play at a, at a Royals game and she got to play at the uh, Kansas City Symphony Hall. Well, in just talking to her for a few moments, and I'm not saying this because I want to you know make you feel like the proud father, but she l- sounds very bright and very articulate. She, clearly, she got her smarts from her mom. I like that. Well, I'm grateful for that too. Yeah, but I'm saying she she seems to you know she she's very good at articulating what she has to say. I mean, she I can tell she's bright. You know, she's also a kind. She's a kind, kind person. And gosh, I, that's yeah. Well, they'll eat her alive in this world. Uh, they'll know? do their best. They'll try. By the way, my nose is itching tonight, folks. I'm not picking it. I'm just. <laughs> I get I get nose itches, you know. Well, that's because the hairs grow so long now out of your nose as you get older. That's why you got to braid them. You know, I'm I'm waiting I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that first uh, mole or something I get that a hair comes out of. Uh, my mother had a mole, and uh, when we finally took her to the uh, 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 Jewish home for the aged. The first thing they did was shave that mole because they were, or pluck it, pluck it, because there was this huge hair. The kind you can wrap it around your finger two or three times yeah, before you yeah. want to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I never had the heart to tell her it was there. You know, I was, mom, just a little pluck, you know, you'll get rid of it. But why does hair grow through moles when you get older? It comes out, hair comes out of places it never came before. Ears, oh my God, you know. <laughs> I, mean, I lost those electric things for your nose. They don't uh, work though; they no, really they don't. Pinch. But uh, no, it works good enough. Yeah. No, you need a new battery. Maybe I'll. May, uh, no, I have. I I can afford batteries, Phil. I'm not that poor yet. So you can't afford it. You just got to change it. Hell, I just I I bought. You know how much this 32 inch monitor cost me at uh, Costco? Eight hundred bucks. Try again. A thousand. More or less. Try one hundred and ninety-seven dollars at Costco. I was going to say about two fifty. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. not an IPS monitor then. Well, it's it's damn good. I don't care. What's an IPS monitor? I don't know what IPS is. Uh, it's the way. Uh, it's for photographs. You know, for uh, uh I forgot what the. Uh, well, I don't do photographs. I do video, so I don't really give a same shit. Thing. I mean, you need it for video, and. No, I, I'm doing this show. On it. The only thing I the only thing I do on this computer is this show, okay. So and this show does not require great resolution, okay. If I want to do great resolution, I'll do it on my at better resolution. I'll do it on my Apple twenty seven inch monitor here. You know. In plane switching monitor. That's it. In plane switching. Okay. Yeah. And it's just you can you can you can tune the the temperature of the colors. Right. Uh, yeah. I, well, have, I, I do. I can to, do. I can do that. Most people, I can do that on my Apple monitor. But I, 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 this I, is a color spectrometer, mm-hmm. and uh, so that we're very impressed. I I could t- I can tune it on mine on my Apple 
but I've never done it ever. Right. Who I wouldn't. Would, why? If if you are making if your job is to make those big beautiful color display things, then you want to make sure that every single the the that it's dialed in. But for most people's purposes, it well, is. Yeah. And I want to make sure that my printer is printing the colors that I see on the monitor. And so yeah. I'm able to calibrate. Okay. All right. Well, this is boring. Uh, yes, yeah. Rob, you had something to say about that. I was just going to say, I worked in a place where we did a lot of artwork and I'm sure Patrick has as well, where you want to make sure that if you create something, you bring it to a different monitor. It, it can't look different. Right. So you calibrate everything. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, so that's what you I, have that I find these days that monitors are, you know, it used to be that monitors all look different, and they don't really as much anymore. They, they really are, you know, I look at all the monitors I've got here. I've got an old Apple, a newer Apple monitor, uh, this 27-incher I bought today, another 32-incher, uh, the 27-incher over there. They all look alike, you know. Uh, I, 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 wait a minute. Uh, uh, Patrick has his hand up. Yeah, they may... They may all look similar when you're looking at things on screen, mm -hmm. but when you print something, mm -hmm. um, you can have two different monitors that look the same, Yeah. but printed product may not look exactly the way that you want it. So that's why, like for me, a calibrated screen is, is necessary. If I'm going to get something printed, I want to make sure that what I see on the screen it was shows up on the paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Customers are very, very particular about what their logos look like. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, we've just been yeah. joined by Jack Bishop, who hasn't turned his camera on. So. No, well, let me do that. I was going to tell you about a screen I had in the 90s that you could turn it. It was like you can have it horizontal, or you could turn the whole screen and, and make it vertical. They still have those. They still have those. They still have those? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Flat Most of them will do that. Yeah, yeah, but it would change the uh, orientation of the uh, of of the picture. Sure, you yeah. can do that. Now, uh, uh, Jack, get uh, what's wrong? He, he's I'm trying to make it uh, move and all. You know, well, don't move. don't move. It's just move the just move the camera. Uh, no, 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 no. No, your head. Uh, the top of your head is cut oh. off. Oh, okay. Well, that's nothing new. That happened years ago when I got married the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, just just move it yeah 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 well not now it's well there that's okay yeah that's fine. okay hey i uh, heard you talking about your new uh your new monitor yeah that you got i got a a, a new set over the holidays 32 inch 159 dollars really <laughs> really 20 dollars cheaper than mine 20 dollars cheaper than yours yeah well you I, had to pay the new york price so you got a new set uh, you know, were you bragging about your Schwantz? <laughs> 32? No I, was, no, I was bragging about yours. Oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Where? The, the um, you know, but 100, 100, I saw this thing, 179 bucks at Costco, and I went, I'm sorry, I'm getting this. You know, I mean, I can't follow that. Plus, I like the idea that because I do a lot of work and, you know, switching the show and everything, the, the pictures are just bigger here you know and i i it's i'm not i'm not like having to pick slowly at the screen and figure out what i'm going to do so uh but i have enough monitors that you could have run a couple of them at the same time and just move stuff to i the have left. To, i over here i have two monitors hooked to one machine i don't have the table space here or the table space on the next table uh mm -hmm. so i so there's no reason for me to do it anyway you know <clears throat> Contrary to what you believe, Phil, this is a professional operation. <laughs> Never thought anything else. No, I think, you know, I've got a pretty amazing setup here, you know. I mean, I've got, in this room alone, five monitors. Jeez. You know, between uh, the, what, the three computers that we have in this, four computers we have in this room. You know, so. And I thought I was overloaded with two monitors and, uh, Three screens. Well, most people who do anything. Two computers and three screens. Like, I've always been using two monitors over the years because it just, you know, it allows me to, to deal with different things in different places. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know this, all this show is done with a PC, uh, which normally I wouldn't use, but it's the best thing for doing this show. So, 
It, you know, it, because to begin with, Microsoft, if you, if you use Skype on the Mac, it is completely different than Skype on, the mic, on, the, on Windows um, in its configuration and everything. Uh, you, this, <laughs> this, uh, this holiday period, I was over at a friend's house who, who is a Mac man, and he had Skype on his Mac, and I said, I don't understand any of this shit. Yeah, but, the, you know, it's just like the each of them, it's, it just doesn't work well. And I need the screen to be work well because mm -hmm. I'm doing, I'm putting this out over the air. Mm -hmm. What people are seeing is actually the Skype feed. Uh, and uh, so anyway, that's the way that goes. So you have nine on right now. Do you still have room if you had another uh, two or three people join the conversation? Do you have room on that screen now? Well, it doesn't matter having room on the screen. I always had I always had room on the screen. No, it's not a Skype limitation at all either. It's just that I have this screen set up for uh, the uh, the browser rather set up for a maximum of not ten people. If we mm -hmm. get more than one of those, it goes over. They go over to the side and off the screen, and I have to spread the screen over, and then I have to readjust it in the in the thing here, and then after the show, I have to readjust it back. So when we get to ten people, I go, "That's it, no more, thank you." You know, but it's doesn't all she the wrote. fidelity suck? What? No. Does, does, no. It doesn't sound bad. It, it used to sound horrific, but no. I, I, I have to give Skype props for a couple of things. Number one, the sound has always been. Pretty, good. pretty damn good. Much better than a telephone if I were to do the show with phones. Also, the video has gotten extremely good. All you people tonight look very high def. All right? You know, yeah. so uh, uh, the way the show looks, if I go back and watch old tapes of when we used to do the thing through live stream and so on, it just, Skype sucked, you know. Uh, can I, Dave? You, you mentioned that you were getting a job with, uh, was it the Weather? Uh, um, National no. Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Oh. Doing IT. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. Neat. Doing IT for a bunch of weather nerds. Okay. So you just don't stick your head out the window and pull the local radio show and say it's cold. <laughs> well, a lot of people are like, you're in Missouri. Why are you going to go to work for the Oceanic Organization? Uh, it, they also run severe weather, and we get severe weather. We get we get uh, tornadoes. and. Well, you're where again? You're... I, I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, okay. How cold was it in Kansas City this week? Um, minus 18. Whoa. Minus 18? So minus 8. Minus 8. How about you, Jeff? How cold did it get up in Connecticut? Uh, it was, uh, I think, minus four. Something really, like that. really. How about you, Kevin? It was cold. You're you're in Cali. Well, you're in California, you pussy. <laughs> Which pussy are you talking I'm, to? I'm talking to to Kevin. Oh. Yeah, it hit. Uh, what, what was it? Rough. I think it got to thirty. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Couple days. We we would have prayed for thirty. Yeah, we would cold down here. We would have prayed for thirty. Yes, Phil. How cold was it uh, where you were out there in Contra Costa? Notice the only times I looked, it was like around forty-eight, fifty-two. Yeah. Fuck you, uh, <laughs> Rob. How cold did it get down there? Uh, it's been single digits, like eight, nine. Now it's eleven. Yeah. Right now in New York City. I feel like I'm on radio again. Right and now, the temperature in New York City is a balmy 19 degrees. The temperature at Broadcast House. <laughs> but, the, but the other night, I, I got down to 9, so I made a copy of it and put it up on my website, on my Facebook page. And then people started sending me their copies of their iPhones, and it was like minus so-and-so. And, you know, and it was basically like you're having warm weather there in New York. It oh, was, it's 20 now. It's shorts weather. Yeah, yeah. But we, hey, my button's bigger than your button. Yes, Jeff. Tomorrow I'm going to Florida. Nice. And I understand it's being pretty cold there. So. Really? Yeah. yeah, people are saying it's going to be 40 and 30 and whatever. And that's it's, cold. It's supposed to be a cold front shooting up the coast over there. It's even been cold here in Texas uh, overnight, New Year's Day, 16. Didn't get up to 25. 
Whoa. Who's? Dallas, and, and right now, checking the AccuWeather. I can't say that. Checking the weather now, it is 24 degrees. And um, uh, we've, we've had um, a lot of water mains break around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's because you're not used to that much cold so that they don't prepare for it. Well, we get these kinds of cold snaps usually every other year. Every year we get ice and snow in the Dallas area, unlike in Houston, where they're having ice and snow tonight. Well, you see, down where Rob lives, when they get cold weather, really cold weather, and or it snows even, they don't know what to do. Right, mm -hmm. Rob? They go crazy. Yeah, and, and the government shuts down, and which causes... Um, you know, well, a lot of things to shut down. Oh, the government shut down, so everything well, shut New down. New York City is prepared for snow, okay? And the reason <laughs> they're prepared for snow is occasionally there's a snowstorm here. But when you get down to where Rob is, it's not frequent that you have snowstorms. And so they, they don't prepare for it. They don't have it. Do they have snow plows? Yeah, we have snow plows. Yeah. snowed. Because we, in California, if it snows, and it has snowed, it snowed once, I remember, in San Francisco. The, the first year I owned my house, my first house, yeah, 2009. I got the I moved in in September of 09. That winter, we got 18 inches of snow, and then just as I got it shoveled up, we got another 18 inches of snow. Uh, so we get it here. Yeah, yeah. I, I moved out to California in December of '73, and uh, I remember it snowed. And I was uh, touring around, just being in amazement of the city. And I was over by uh, Knob Hill by the Fairmont. And I saw this Chinese guy. This is very racist. And I saw him mouthing at the top of the, the street, car no stop, car no stop. <laughs> <laughs> he was sliding down uh, Mason Street. <laughs> so, yeah, they do that in the rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jack. So, yeah, one year we had... Uh, like I said, we get ice and snow uh, usually a couple of times during the winter. But one year we had wave after wave of snowstorms. And, you know, for us, a snowstorm is an inch, two inches at most. But we had it coming and going throughout that winter. And these Texans finally learned how to drive in this shit. <laughs> And, uh, you know, down here, we got a lot of folks who like their four-wheel drive pickups. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing my ass off because there's nothing funnier than seeing a four-wheel drive vehicle slide with all four wheels turning. Unless it's coming at you. Unless it's coming at you. That's because they're six feet up in the air. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yes, uh, I, Mike. We had one time here in Sacramento, we had a dusting. And it got so cold. It actually froze the snow, becomes ice. To watch the people drive here in Sacramento, it was hilarious. People slide across the road and everything. One guy goes, I guess I gotta put chains on my tires. Oh, for you know, fuck. kidding. I, you, you go, are you idiot, you're not supposed to go 90 miles an hour down the middle of the road. Uh, you, know, you, know what they, you know what they don't have anymore and they used to have when i lived in snow which was in klamath falls oregon where you really lived in snow um they um i had um what was it uh uh i oh that i had studded snow tires i don't think they allow them anymore if i'm not no, they're not allowed anymore. yeah but and man so roads too. yeah snudded stu snudded studded snow studded. tires snudded snow tires uh really did the trick i mean yeah. you know you didn't have to buy chains and in fact i kept them on when summer came i didn't want to yeah. change my why did they tires. stop that why is that illegal now because they dug up the roads yeah it, it, i remember as a kid my parents had studded tires on their uh on their but car. the thing i always questioned was if in fact they hadn't stopped doing it because it was digging up the roads, what the hell do fucking chains do? Yeah, you know, I mean, I and, and with chains, it, I, I always always said that driving with chains on is like fucking with a condom. Well, you, only you know, it's just it, it doesn't seem right. 
You leave the chains on temporarily. You can take them off. Whereas right. the snow tires no. are on all no, the time. No, somebody yeah. else takes them off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It costs but, uh, you like no, twenty bucks or twenty five bucks to put them on, twenty five bucks to take them off, and you just went three miles. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, we're not allowed to have chains on our tires in Wisconsin, or at least in the Milwaukee area, um, for the same reason as the studded tires. Is it just tears up the road? And the other thing is, we don't use concrete anymore when we. We tear roads and repave them. We use asphalt, so the shit goes to hell a lot faster anyway. So I mean, you know, every couple of years they're repaving the interstate, yeah. and for just regular driving, and the shit gets torn mm -hmm. up. So yeah, chains and, and studded tires aren't allowed here, and we get plenty of snow, and yeah, Jeff. Yeah, Patrick will like this. Is I lived in Wisconsin for a while, and uh, we would go on Friday nights once in a while. Everybody would go play pool or uh, play cards at somebody else's house. And so everybody would drive up their cars, except your cars, your, your batteries would get cold because it could be like 20, 25 below zero. So you had to actually take your batteries out of the car bring them in the person's house what? to keep them warm oh yeah how the hell do you do that everybody carries wrenches and yeah because yeah. they, they discharge real quick in the cold yeah. lived in Detroit and they had heaters that would go over the engine right yep. uh, and and he'd That's start right. his car remotely and let it warm well, up I lived in Minneapolis okay yep. Which is the is the land they call it the land of ten thousand frozen lakes, and uh, it I have never been well I've never uh, close to that I've never been in bitter cold like that in my life, and the thing was that I used to get off at midnight I used to go on at eight get off at midnight, and you'd have a, you'd be you know ten below fifteen below zero I would have to go out a half hour before the show was over. And turn my car on so it would be warm enough for me to, to go home. And uh, on top of that, uh, it used to be so bad that, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I, I, was, I was afraid that it wouldn't start. But it did start because it had only been turned off for a couple of hours. But, man, that was something. Yes, Patrick. And then Jack. That's the fun thing with, with me, even like tonight going out to dinner, it was uh, two degrees, uh, 10 degrees when I went in the restaurant, two degrees when I came out. And uh, just putting a chair in the car, mm -hmm. finger just about falling the fuck off. Oh. I, I can't wear regular clothes because you can't get a grip on anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your fingers are exposed. So what I do is I keep the car running mm -hmm. with the heat as high as it can go. Yeah. And every time I come in the car with a piece, I at least get some warmth. Um, <laughs> and I I have a remote start on my car, and I have for the last several, but I can't use it because the wheel moves. And when I transfer into the car, I have to grab the wheel. And if it moves... I can't get a grip on it, and I end up on my ass outside. So oh. it's fucking cold in the car. All the uh, yes, uh, 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 Jack. Yeah, you know when I came to America from the free state of California, uh, you know my first job was away away from the coast was in Houston, and all you worry about in Houston is humidity and heat. My next job was in Knoxville, Tennessee. And Knoxville's a beautiful city, and it was a uh, mild winter when it first hit. And then one night, it snowed, and it snowed really good. And I walk out to get in my car in the apartment complex, and I said, what the fuck is this, and how do I drive in it? Mm -hmm. I never, you know. And uh, it, it was a... It was a comedy of errors, and luckily the midday guy had not left yet. And I said, he was from New York, 
And he'd been a cab driver in New York. And I said, hey, look, uh, 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 I'll do whatever you want if you will drive me to work so I can do uh, you know, my PD's gig and do the afternoon show. And he said, would you give me two days off on the weekend? And that son of a bitch held me to that all throughout the winter. I had to work an extra shift for him. Wow. Uh, uh, by the way, let me ask a question here. Oh, by the way, Kevin, thank you so much for being Santa Claus. You know, I went out of my way to freeze a picture of it so it could be online being the <laughs> the picture. I that saw we, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, you and your wife, that was lovely. It was just lovely. But we have three people here who have a distinction uh, uh, over the rest of the panel, and that is that you live in a state where marijuana is now legal. Have any of you been to one of the stores to buy your recreational pot yet? No. Boy, oh, yeah. I would have been down there so fucking fast just to say I bought some. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I think Damien said it best tonight on his show when he said that what's great about it is that now I can smoke marijuana without the fear of getting busted. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's and, what made me give it up when I moved. A federal back. crime? Huh? It's still a federal crime. Yeah, but but they they don't arrest the federal people. The feds don't go throughout California looking for people who are smoking pot. You know, it's and it's not a federal crime. It, it's a. It is. it is. It's federally illegal. Well, it's, it's not absolutely federally illegal. I is it is it federally illegal or is it still in the state that it was in? When they first made it, not illegal, but you, they could arrest you for it because you didn't have a tax stamp. It's no longer tax stamp based. Um, it is, it, but it, you can be charged with a uh, with a federal felony if they want to. But they, yeah. but who's going to do it in the state of California? Right. The feds, it's, the feds' the authority point. does not supersede local authority because of states' rights. It's, they could it, come in. They could yeah. come in and arrest you if they wanted to. Yay! Well, no, that's well, why, what they did that's to make why the money part of well, it is that, really that, touchy right now too. Well, that's what happened in in Colorado. Guys were uh, literally having to hire armed guards to to watch over the money in the stores because yeah. they had this cash all, just building up all, yeah. because the government wouldn't let banks take the marijuana money. Now, Finally, they, I think they the solved tax. the problem by having credit unions were able to. Now they're going to tax the the marijuana profits uh, or the marijuana it's something and like thirty so, something like thirty percent. Yeah, and they're saying I think they said California, if I'm right, is looking at a billion dollars in tax revenue. I think I at it, least was, uh, yeah, yeah at least so at what, least. What are they going to do? Go with a a, a a card of money to pay their tax bill? Yeah. Well, but what I think they're going to do what what they t determined could happen in Colorado now. These they're putting all their money in credit unions because I think they're not federally controlled, and so the uh, the federal the federal government can't take away their ability to run a credit union. Buy uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and so that's what they're doing, and I think they'll probably do the same thing in California, and, and probably credit unions will be very happy to do it because it'll make them very solvent businesses. Yes, uh, Jack. Well, Alex knows this. When we lived in Houston in the 60s, you could get serious jail time for having possession of any amount of marijuana. And when I moved to Dallas after bouncing around the country for a while, uh, one of the stories that was just breaking when I got here was a local newspaper reporter going to jail for life. For possession of marijuana. I had a buddy that went to Attica for eight years over marijuana. Yeah, well, well, eight years you can do, but yeah, life. But, uh, 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 do you remember the days when uh, the actor Robert Mitchum got busted for having a joint? And he got three months in jail, and he was a movie star. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I was just on joint. Alex and, Alex and I and uh, his second wife used to smoke marijuana in the bathtub, just like in that movie. Well, because the first place, first place I ever smoked marijuana was in Houston. Yeah. And uh, um, um, uh, Ronnie had a, had a hairdresser 
who was willing to sell her marijuana. He was working as a dealer, right? So we scored some. And I said, you know, I really don't know about doing this stuff because I've heard that if you do this marijuana stuff, uh, a, a, your next thing you're going to want is to do heroin. And, and, and Ronnie said, that's stupid. Just give it a try because she was a little more uh, worldly than I was in that in that realm yeah. and so i smoked the i smoked the joint uh, and uh we were driving home and i was so stoned that i said you better uh, you better do it for me you better drive so she drove and the next day i said that was pretty good and i called up her hairdresser and i said hey that was really good and thank you so much uh, any any more and he says yeah but would you like me do you, would you like some heroin <laughs> <laughs> And I went, well, no thanks. Uh, I'll buy my stuff somewhere else. And I don't think I smoked another joint till we got so out of Houston. So it is gateway drug. Now you're oh, finding yourself. Oh, oh, the Houston police were, re were going to try and bust me. I got out of town. I left that town two days before they were planning on planting pot on me and busting Look, me. Uh, you started with marijuana. Now you're you didn't hear the. You're, I'm, I just said look, something. And you're on, and you're I just said Alice. something, Phil. That was a very <laughs> interesting story, and you hell. you had to go on with whatever was on your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, the benefit of marijuana is this: it is the only known substance that will make teenage boys drive slowly. <laughs> yeah. Well, true. anyway, here here is here's the point. They were going to bust me. By planting marijuana on me. Why, why did That's they great. want to bust me? Because I had the goods on them. Uh, I had the goods on the police department that on Tuesday evenings, they used to hold Ku Klux Klan meetings at the police headquarters. Oh, shit. And I was about to reveal that, and they knew that. But I got this job in uh, Minneapolis, and so I was out of town two days before they planned on planting the shit on me. One of the running jokes in Houston was... Uh the Houston Police Department was so diligent that when they shot somebody for some offense, they'd turn the body over and there'd be 10, 15 throwdown pieces underneath him. Yeah. And a throwdown piece, as Phil knows, is a gun that a cop carries to, you know, nail a case, you know, when he shot somebody. Yeah. Yeah. How about Not that, she, Phil? She can't do it. What? Mm -hmm. Not as so many people with cameras, even the cops, uh, if, if somebody tried somebody tried actually to do that, a cop tried to do that, and he got busted from his own uh, camera, a uh, vest camera. I uh, saw that video. Putting down the throwdown piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they had, yeah, they, they had a, a video of that. I wonder, I wonder if uh, somewhere there's a file of, like, cop cam cameras that are, like, uh, you know, it's a blooper reel. Uh, because it's got to be release that stuff. Uh, I know, but there's got to be a blooper reel somewhere of just silly get, cop stuff. Yeah. We got to get tightly Phil to go secured. undercover and get the reel. I'll yeah, bet it's very tightly secured from from what I know because I help put these systems in. Uh, you're not getting to that unless because I don't know if you've seen them, but if you've gone online and looked for the you know in Russia, because people are so litigious, they they like throw themselves in front of your car so that they can then sue you for you hitting them. So people now all have cameras in their cars shooting every minute. And because they've got all these cameras going, there's some great shit online. I've seen some of those things. Oh, the accidents? Yeah, yeah. I did a blue screen thing on uh, the TV show when we did it. I don't know if you remember it, Patrick, but I did a blue screen where I had these videos going on. I was pretending like I was driving. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, cows are getting in the way. We're hitting this lampposts, and it's very. I loved it. You know, wonderful stuff was very funny. I got to tell you one other thing before we go off, uh, and it reminded me. I used to have a segment on the TV thing we did. That's when I first got fired, and we went. And we were going to do radio, but we did a TV version of it. And uh, I remember that we started a segment called. What the hell is going on on Mexican TV? <laughs> and I would show these clips that we couldn't figure out what the fuck they were doing because they're speaking another language. But like, there's a late night show host like Car Johnny Carson or like Jimmy Fallon who sits at a desk and straight faced, well, uh, somewhat straight faced, interviews people. And he's in clown face. Mm. And, you, you, you know, since I don't speak the language, I'm going, 
what the fuck is going on here? So <laughs> I suddenly, uh, because I got Fios, they now put all the stations in the order you would get them if they were coming off, off the antenna. And one of them is a Spanish station. And I tune over there at like 11 o'clock in the morning, and there are women very scantily clad going coochie-coochie wearing crotch floss, and then guys all dressed as clowns, and another guy dressed as Dracula, and another guy is just plain fat, and some woman who's dressed like Cleopatra, and, I'm, and they're all laughing with each other, and I don't know what the fuck's going on. And I wanted to start that segment again, except, you know, fucking Facebook would say, oh, it's copyrighted. You know, I mean, what? Just pl go watch any of this stuff and say, what the fuck's going on? You used to have a segment of people shooting guns and uh, having misfires where people would shoot their feet. No, I had, I had, no, I had uh, on the TV thing that we yeah. did from uh, um, Adrian's studio, uh, Steve's studio. Um, uh, we did a thing um, where I went online. I found women with literally automatic guns in bikinis. Oh, yeah. that sounds sexy, huh? Yeah, I saw one. Well, well there's, a, there's a lot of jiggling going on. This that's for damn sure. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, has anybody but me seen the Russian nude newscasts where the woman strips? I haven't seen it. They used to have that here in the U.S. as well. It was called Nude News. It was a website. They would read your yeah, real yeah, news. Well, and naked news. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was a show on in Italy. I knew so much more about current events when that was an active thing. That <laughs> there was a show in Italy called The Color of Money. And I don't know how the game was played, but after every, something happened, a woman would come out, scantily clad, almost bereft of clothing, and do a hoochie-coochie dance and point to a number. And then they go back to playing the game again. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, I suddenly decided Spanish TV, Mexican TV, I doubt if in Mexico there's a Me Too movement. It's better than Fox. Because, Fox I mean, th these women are being so exploited for their bodies and, and you know, the hoochie-coochie aren't stuff. Most of the men, aren't hmm? most of the men portrayed as uh, as idiots and, uh, and and buffoons on those shows, even the, even the ones that aren't dressed well, as Well, that's clowns. not difficult because we are, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, and on that note, I will see you at the top of the hour. Oh, oh there, there, goes, there goes Jack. Don't forget, he and Amy uh, are doing their first show of the year tonight. So be sure to join him and... Uh, um, let me see here. How do I get rid of them? How do I get rid of them? I got to get rid of them. How, how do I uh, remove from uh, remove person from group? Oh, now it says now it says it's busy. Now remove per, remove person from group. There we go. Okay. Ah, uh, boy. But anyway, so I I I got to tell you, I just I uh, watched this TV and I'm going. Well, I love the cleavage, and I love the crotch floss, but what the fuck is going on here? And it's a kid's show, by the way. I forget, did I mention that? Oh, God. Just turn the sound off. Where they bring, they then bring kids on to sing songs, and while they're singing, they're, like, doing skits in the background trying to uh, make them not be able to sing. And I'm going, what is this all about? What, what's the purpose of the show? The raison d'etre, if you will. What? Isn't the guy in Mexico that owns the, uh, uh, not the station, but Carlos, the network? Uh, Carlos uh, Carlos Slim is his name. Yeah. De la Mundo. Yeah. World. He is the, well, he is one of the richest men in the world. I think at one point, I think he made number one. Really? But for well, a short time. And he, did it, and he did it with that kind of programming. Imagine <laughs> if he had Gabnet under his uh, control, what he could do. Well, no, Gabnet <laughs> would be, I would tell you right now that Gabnet would be, a major hit on the internet. If I had a buxomy, good-looking babe sitting here talking to you guys in a bikini, okay? You mean sign language. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we even have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we would get so many viewers if I did that. I wish I could find. Is there a woman out there who would like to just do that some night and come over here and do the show in a bikini? Uh, and and yes, we want to exploit you. And you can is, see, is well, we get sick? we get a lot of viewers. What is Marjorie still sick? Uh, no. All right. Well, you know. yeah. Everybody <laughs> wants to see a seventy-five-year-old woman in her bikini. Okay. Too much. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know.
Yeah, yeah. They want to see well, that. She's available. I mean, <laughs> well, she's cheap. That's for damn sure. <laughs> you know, uh, and I know her personally, so I think I can talk to her. Hey, listen, this has been uh, kind of fun for a show of the year, uh, and 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 uh, it's also interesting for me to be able to relax and see a really nice picture of all you folks uh, talking. Uh, thank you, uh, Dave Shuck. Always a pleasure. Your daughter is just she's number one. She's lovely and she's intelligent. Where did that thank gene you. come from, Mike? Thank you, Jeff Stein. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Santa Claus. You'll be our Santa Claus. I want you to wear the Santa outfit in June, <laughs> just just for the hell of it. In June, we'll okay. have you wear the Santa outfit. It, it, you don't have to take it back to where you rented it from or anything. You own that, right? No, it just goes under the bed. Yep. Uh, and Phil Meyer, thank you. Rob Alfano, a pleasure. And of course, Patrick Blazik, uh, we love to have you here. You know what? All you people should do: you should all wave goodbye, and then they can. Yeah, there they go, folks. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it. Let me turn them all off here and let me get rid of them. Uh, let me see here. Did I did I stop this? Uh, I did stop it. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure we're okay. I'm Alex Bennett. That's it. We got uh, The Ramble is next with uh, Jack and Amy. And after that, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Connections hits the airwaves right here on GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time. Let me just do something here. Hold on a second. I'll see you tomorrow, same time. I, you know, a couple of weeks, and I forget how this whole thing operates. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And how about the new graphic, huh? Isn't this good? <laughs>